Which of our traditional Thanksgiving dishes would have been on that first Thanksgiving menu? It's not what you think. There's a lot of disagreement over when the first Thanksgiving celebrations took place in North America. Native American traditions of giving thanks were common well before the arrival of the first European colonists. And Canada's Thanksgiving dates back to 1578 when an English explorer and his crew celebrated their safe arrival in Newfoundland following their crossing of the Northwest Passage. In the United States, different Thanksgiving feasts have been put forward as the first, ranging from the explorer Oñate in Texas to the settlers in St. Augustine, Florida. But among historians, 1621 is generally accepted as the first Thanksgiving held by the Pilgrims at Plymouth, Massachusetts. And most historians agree that by the end of the 1600s, Thanksgiving celebrations were being held across New England, although not on any specific date. Choosing a date would come later with presidents and more presidents getting involved. But this Thanksgiving, thankfully, we are not here to talk about politics. We are here to talk about that yummy food that ends up on your Thanksgiving plate. So which of our treasured Thanksgiving dishes would have been on the menu in 1621? I guarantee it's not what you think. Thanksgiving food, fact or fiction? Coming in at number five, who doesn't love the bright red of cranberries? According to foodandwine.com, Americans consume five million gallons of cranberry sauce during the holidays each year. But was it on the Thanksgiving menu? Although cranberries did originate in the Northeast, sugar did not. And according to history.com, the sacks of sugar that had traveled with the pilgrims on the Mayflower had been depleted by 1621. It was years later that cranberry began being paired with turkey for Thanksgiving feasts. Moving on to number four, corn on the cob. Yum, right? But were they licking butter off their fingers at that first Thanksgiving feast? According to various accounts, the pilgrims arrived at Plymouth with 14 baskets of corn that they had discovered and taken while exploring the Nauset Indian Territory in Cape Cod. And later the Wapanag taught them techniques for growing corn, including how to prepare the soil. That said, corn wasn't the sweet, juicy corn on the cob that we know today. Today we know it as flint corn, and that name says it all. The hard corn would have been ground into a type of cornmeal and then used to make a porridge. And if you're cringing at the idea of eating mushy porridge for your Thanksgiving feast, wait till we move on to number three. Before I go on, if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. At number three is mashed potatoes. Who doesn't love mashed potatoes and gravy on Thanksgiving day? But what about our first Thanksgiving guest? Not a chance. By the 1600s, the humble potato had made its way from South America where it originated to Europe, but it was just making its way to North America. And in fact, during the 1620s, a British governor in the Bahamas sent potatoes to Virginia as a gift. Even then, it was not a hit. And no surprise, since those first potatoes probably looked more like this than what we're used to today. So it wasn't until years later, in the early 1800s, when Thomas Jefferson served what was essentially French fries at a dinner that potatoes started catching on. Next to last, at number two, let's talk about green beans. Does your mouth water for mom's green bean casserole on Thanksgiving? That mushroom cream sauce and the fried onions on top? Well, it seems that there were green beans, and for the sauce, there was mushrooms, cream, and even onions. But there was one critical thing missing, which brings me on to number one, pumpkin pie. Wait, wait, what happened? Did you just skip over mom's green bean casserole? No, don't worry, I just put it to warm in the oven because the history of mom's green bean casserole is inadvertently linked to grandma's pumpkin pie. Which brings me officially to number one. Aside from turkeys, which I'll touch on at the end of this video, pumpkins are symbolic of any Thanksgiving feast. Surely they had pumpkins and squash, you might be saying. It does appear that the first Thanksgiving might have included squash or pumpkins that were cooked in fire ashes, but grandma's pie crust was definitely nowhere to be found. Wheat rust had struck the Northeast around the same time, and so even the breads at that point in time were being made with a mixture of corn or mace and rye. And honestly, if we're talking specifically about the pilgrims in 1621, it wouldn't have mattered. And this is where your mom's green bean casserole and your grandma's pumpkin pie come together because 
the pilgrims did not have an oven. No oven, so no pumpkin pies, no green bean casseroles. So what did they eat on Thanksgiving? Well, they would have eaten local foods such as onions, beans, cabbages, the flint corn, and surprisingly, seafood, as mussels were in abundance. The diary of William Bradford, the governor of the Plymouth Colony, indicated that he had sent a hunting party out a few days before the feast to go fowling. And he also indicated in his diaries that the Wapenaag men provided five deer for the feast. Whether turkey was on the menu or not is much disputed among historians, so I am going to leave that to the experts to decide amongst themselves. Thanks for joining me today for this Thanksgiving food fact or fiction. For those of you celebrating, I wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving with your friends and family. Take care. Bye.